Zero Accounting Software 2023 Adjusting Entry and Reversing Entry Journal Reports. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Focusrite Scarlet Solo 3rd Gen USB Interface with Software Suite. I've been using a Focusrite for years for my audio needs, before which time I had a USB microphone which plugged directly into the computer. But I think you'll find, as I have found, if you want to increase the quality of your microphone, you will need an interface, and the Focusrite is the go-to interface as far as I'm concerned. I've been using this for years now. It works well, it's easy to use, it seems quite durably built. Because I only do the screen recordings, I only need the one solo interface. However, if you have multiple microphones you need to plug in, or if you have other instruments you need to plug in, you can look at a similar model that has more input ports. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage, going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, Get Great Guitars. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time, right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the tab up top again to duplicate it again. Back to the middle tab, accounting drop down, we're opening the balance sheet. This is a comparative balance sheet, but if you don't have that one, open the standard balance sheet tab and to the right accounting drop down income statement this is a comparative income statement but if you don't have that open the standard income statement back to the tab to the left we've been looking at the adjusting and reversing entries adjusting entries being those made at the end of the period typically the month or a year in order to make the financial statements correct for the accounting method being used typically an accrual or tax method for example we're using an accrual method the adjusting date being February 28 in our case. So let's just do a quick recap of the adjustments that have been made to some of the accounts on the balance sheet and then uh, we'll generate our adjusting journal entry reports which can be useful when communicating especially if you have a difference between who's doing the adjusting entries and who's doing the normal uh, bookkeeping data input which is often different because sometimes you might have adjustments needed to be made by the tax preparer, uh, which is oftentimes different maybe than who is doing uh, the bookkeeping. So you need the communication of the adjusting entries that have been made in the system so, so that uh, you, you, you are able to communicate. So we'll generate those reports with journal reports. Now note that the adjusting entries do not typically have cash involved in them because that's generally taken care of with the bank reconciliation as the internal control. Adjusting entries typically have two accounts and they're timing accounts that, uh, that we deal with balance sheet account and income statement account, at least two accounts typically. So for the accounts receivable, we had an adjusting entry related to an invoice that was entered after the cutoff in March that we pulled in before the cutoff. We made a separate transaction for it, a separate account, which we were able to group together using the edit layout, great tool from zero here so that we could compress them to one account for external reporting purposes. We then did a reversing entry to remove it so we can go we can go back to where we were so we don't have it in there twice for the uh, normal bookkeeping process. Timing different classic adjusting entry. Inventory. We did an adjustment for the inventory for the same reason because we imagined that we sold a piece of inventory during that process we have a separate account 
for the inventory account that we made the adjustment to so we didn't mess up the sub ledger tracking inventory on a perpetual basis within the system we reversed it we still have something in the sub ledger here because uh, we had another issue during the normal bookkeeping process but uh, if that wasn't the issue it would reverse back out and you can group those again into one inventory account using the great layout tool that Zero has. We've got the uh, prepaid insurance, which we paid up front with cash for a year's worth of insurance. We lowered it by 11,000, and that one is a permanent difference. No reversing entry for it, because we're just gonna lower it as we consume the insurance uh, policy. We made an adjustment to the furniture and fixture, the, the fixed assets, and this one is similar to the prepaid insurance, but we allocated the cost of the fixed assets according to the depreciation schedules, which are often tracked outside of the accounting software, at least in the United States, due to tax obligations forcing us to track the, 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 the depreciation schedules on a tax basis, and therefore it might be useful just to use the same software to do the tax stuff too. Again, Zero has a great uh, formatting tool allowing us to see a full breakout of these items down here or to collapse them to see the book value each time or just to the fixed assets and to allow us without having to add account numbers show the furniture and fixture before the accumulated depreciation even though in alphabetical order within this account category it would be the other way around so really flexible tool there which is quite nice we did an adjustment for the loan payable and this one we were simply breaking out between short term and long term portion of the loan payable so here's the the short and long term portion for the loan payable and then we reversed that putting it back into the one account and then we also had uh you could have an adjusting entry we talked about an adjusting entry related to unearned revenue and and that's revenue that we've generated that we have not yet and there, there's a couple different we haven't yet earned and there's a couple different ways that that might come about depending on the industry that we are in so we could have an adjusting entry related to that we didn't have one in our case here we had an adjusting entry related to the interest payable and accrued expense for interest that incurred that we had not yet uh, that we had not yet recorded so we had to pull that in here we did a reversing entry for that one so it didn't throw people off uh, on the bookkeeping side of things so there's just a, a quick recap now let's generate our reports I, and I'll I'll uh, go to the tab to the right right click and duplicate this time let's just open a standard balance sheet so I'm gonna hit the drop down and go to the balance sheet uh, standard which I don't have here let's go into the reports I haven't I haven't used the standard balance sheet in so long actually let's just open I'll open up the comparative one and then I'll just remove the comparison columns because I want to keep the other formatting that we had in here so I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna edit the layout and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collapse some of these items so I'm gonna edit the layout and I'm gonna say I'm going to remove uh, January well, was I think I can remove these two and then I'll change the date to February so I'm gonna say uh, trash that column trash this column and then I'll change the date when I get back there I'm just gonna call it a normal balance sheet and then I want to collapse the inventory account to just show inventory uh, so there we have it and then I'm gonna collapse the accounts receivable just so we should have that one account for accounts receivable I'll leave the fixed assets the way they are I could also collapse the loan payable account so I could just see the loan payable and then that looks good I could collapse long-term liabilities but I'll keep it at that so now let's let's update it just to show the flexibility of the zero reporting which is a, a big advantage that zero has that's uh, on its flexibility here so I'm making this as of 228 and so now we've got the cash the accounts receivables on one line item the inventories on one line item even though we had those adjusting accounts in there 
and we've got the prepaid insurance and then uh, the furniture and fixtures broken out and then the liabilities we have in the line item down here the one line item for the loan payable and then the long-term liabilities very nice all right and then I could uh, send these out let's just export it as a PDF and I'll save it over here and if we're giving this to someone else we could also do the whole uh, Excel thing as well but I won't do that this time just in the interest of time so I'll put this in here so we have that report and then I'm going to go and say let's right click and duplicate another one and do a similar thing for the income statement so I'm going to say drop down and let's just open a normal profit and loss report and this one I think is fairly straight let's hit the drop down let's just do it for the two month period custom date range it's going from January to February 28 and then we've got the income cost of goods sold I don't think we need to do any real fancy stuff for the reporting so we could do comparative income statements for the two months and so on but I'll just generate this one let's say PDF making the P to the D to the F and pulling that on over into our reports over here in our folder okay so now let's open up a standard trial balance report and this is not one you would often give externally but I'm gonna generate it for our internal use and we might use it to communicate with the bookkeepers for example and the and the adjusting department and the and the accounting department so I'm gonna say this is gonna go to uh, reports and let's type in trial balance trial bow and I'll generate this one for February and let's say this is gonna be the end of Feb 2023 is what we want to see running it so that's as of the cutoff date and then I will generate that uh, export P to the D to the F and let's pull that bad doggy in here and all right so then trial balance i'm going to rename that one because i'm going to make another trial balance and you might want to i'm just going to adjust the names on these i'll call this trial balance for uh 0228 and then these i don't really need the income statement so i'll just rename it and i i just want it to say income statement is what i mean I don't need the get great guitars stuff and then this one I'm gonna rename it and get rid of the get great guitars stuff also on this one it's not doing it stop being st stubborn and then we'll do this one uh, for March as well let's do a custom one March so the end of the next month so you can see the reversing entries we we wouldn't be showing this one externally but for our own internal purposes we might uh, generate another one so we can check our numbers if you know you're trying to tie out with somebody else on the adjusting entries you would want to run the report for both dates to make sure all the reversing entries have been properly put in place as well so I'm gonna say let's export this one export PDF Pudf, pudf, and that's what it is a pudf. And then I'm going to rename that one and we'll make that a trial balance. And this is going to be on 0331. 
Okay, and then let's make another report and let's take a look at our journal reports now. This is what we've all been waiting for, of course. The journal reports to show the transactions we have made. Let's open up our uh, reports and type in journal report. And we wanna just see our adjusting entry. So we'd like to trim this down to just see the adjusting entry. So you got this nice drop down here that says posted manual journals only. I'm gonna pick that. So that just shows the manual journals. I'm gonna change the date and we're gonna say custom date range. The Feb 28 was the cutoff date uh, and Feb 28, so just one day. So when we're trying to capture just our adjusting entries, then the tools that we have is one, they were manual journal entries. They were not other kinds of transactions that have debits and credits, right? We did a manual journal entry two. They're all as of the same point in time, February 28th and three, we labeled them as adjusting entries so that we could see that they are clearly adjusting entries. Now note that that might not, we have some other entries that were made down here with manual journal entries that kind of mess up our whole thing. So what we can do is clean this up a little bit further by exporting it to Excel if we're gonna provide this to someone else and simply delete these last two. So that's what I would typically do. So this one I'm gonna say, let's export it to Excel and then I'll drag that into my into my sheet over here. And I'm going to then open it. I'll just rename it. I'll rename it. These are our ADJ and reversing entries. And then I'll just open that thing up. Open it up. And then here we have it. So this is what we have. And so I usually go to the tab to the right to see if it fits on a page. It does not. So we can then landscape it, go into our formatting, uh, review, uh, no, format, uh, uh, page layout, I mean. Page, that's what I meant. And then we're gonna go to the page setup, orientation, landscapeify it. It's been landscapeified, just like my front lawn was landscape -ified. So then I'm gonna go down. And so then I could just delete this last bit. So I don't need, this was uh, a manual entry. That's the last one. These two are not legit adjusting entries. Putting my cursor on the 40 down to 52, right click, delete, get out of here. And so there's our adjusting entries that we made. Let's put our, let's, I'll double click on the tab and call these ADJ entry. Now I'm gonna put the reversing entries next door to this one, right next door. Uh, so they can be close to each other because they get along, they're not gonna fight or anything. So then we're gonna say that this is gonna be, let's do this for March for the reversing entries. March 31st, oh wait, wait. March 1st, March 1st, all the reversing entries happened on March 1st, March 1st. Okay, reversing entries. So these are less likely to see any reversing entries here or things that are not reversing entries, but of course, like the adjusting entries, we entered them as uh, of a point in time, all of them in March, we entered them as manual reversing it or manual journal entries, and uh, we label them reversing entries. So we should be able to locate them easily. Let's just open the Excel file this time and I'll copy and paste the Excel this time into the other Excel. So we have them both side by side fighting together to make the accounting work better. And then I'm gonna go up top and select the whole sheet the uh, triangle, right click on it and copy it and then go back on over. I'm gonna add another sheet over here and then put my cursor here or on the whole sheet, right click and paste it. And then we'll double click down here and call it reverse entry. I'll tab to the right, layout back to the left, 
doesn't quite fit on a page. So page layout, orientation, landscape. So there we have it. Okay, just a quick recap of these. Now we can see these adjusting entries. We had an adjusting entry here. This is breaking it out the short-term and long-term portion of the loan. We reversed that one, short-term, long-term portion breaking out. That's a one that we enter and reverse. This one here is the depreciation recording the reduction or allocation of the cost of depreciation over the useful life. No reversing entry related to the depreciation because it's a permanent difference. This one also depreciation, no reversing entry. This one is the insurance. This is prepaid insurance allocating the cost of the insurance in the period that we incurred the insurance. No reversing entry related to it because it's a permanent difference. Then we had the adjustment for the invoice that was entered uh, in March, even though we earned the revenue before, Mar before the cutoff in February. So we entered the adjusting entry here to pull the revenue back into the proper time frame and that one does have a reversing entry because it's simply a timing difference and then this one was the interest the accrued expense that we wanted to pull back into the current period and that one does did have a reversing entry uh, so that we didn't mess up the accounting department to tie into the amortization table when they're making their entries all right so let's save this one and then I'm going to print this as one PDF file using the cute PDF printer. So I'll go to the printer. I, I have a cute PDF printer. It's not just cute. I'm not, I don't even know if it's all that cute. Really, I've seen cuter. I've seen, I've seen cuter. But, uh, but the reason to use it is because it, when you print it, it'll then print it as a PDF file instead of instead of printing to a printer. I think it's free. You can find it online, search for the pre printer. I think it's safe. If it's not, I've infected my computer and you know, spyware is probably tracking my every movement and they're laughing at me, but whatever, I don't care. So anyways, here's the two of them uh, on one page. Let's go ahead and print it, print it out. And then we'll put that over here and we're going to say, this is going to be adjusting and, and why do you have that adjusting and reversing, but it's not an Excel file, not an EX. So let's save it like that and boom, shakalaka. Uh, there we have it. So now we've got, if I, if I double click on this one, that opens up our adjusting and reversing entries. So we can provide that from the adjusting department to the accounting department, possibly just to explain, explain ourselves. Why does this only have one page to it? Hold on a second here. There should be two pages. Is that two pages? Uh, yeah, there's two pages there. It says right there. Okay, so then you might want to then, to give this to someone else, we might want to label our reports, possibly numbering them so that we can, so they can open them in order. So I'm going to, I might say that this one, maybe I'm going to rename and say that one's number one and this one's number two. Why am I number two? That's just the way it is. Okay, income statement. You're not, the, you're not number one. Income statement. You're following, you're following up. And then the trial balance, trial balance is going to be number three. Ah, oh, number three, sometimes right click, rename trial balance number three. And then this trial balance I'll say is number four, number four. Oh my goodness. It did it again. Number four. And then the adjusting entries are last. Yes, you have to be last adjusting entries. That's the way it was. It has just has to be that way. And then we're going to right click and then say, let's make, let's put these into just uh, adjusting entry reports maybe 
and then we can put these in here because providing the reports to somebody is half the job, half the battle. It's not really a battle. We're not fighting anyone, but that's what G.I. Joe says. It's half the battle. So, uh, so obviously I copied G.I. Joe because they're cool. But let's go ahead and zip this. Then we can zip it. Uh, we can right click and compress and zip it. And so there we have it. So we can add this then to a uh, an email if we needed to do that. And then they can open it up and it would be in order and so on.